All right, joining me now here on the MMA Report, a man that fights on Saturday at ACB 70. Of course, you can watch it on Fight TV. Christos Yagos. Christos, as always, man, I appreciate you coming on the show. Short notice fight. You know, we hear about this MMA all the time of taking a short notice fight. For you, what goes into that decision uh, of whether to take a fight on short notice? Uh, For me, it's not a big deal. You know, um, my last fight in UFC. Uh, I did that. I took a fight on two and a half weeks' notice, and I actually kind of gassed out that fight. Um, I promised I wouldn't let that happen again, and you know, I, I haven't. I've, I always stay ready now. I always stay in shape. I always stay within two and a half to three weeks ready for a fight. Um, if I start slacking off, I pick it back up. But uh, um, I mean, my last couple of fights actually were all pretty much one month notice fights. So, um, except for like. Yeah, except for one of them. But yeah, the other two, they're short notice, and I always stay ready. So I, I was looking for a fight for about two months, and uh, I got one, and I was ready for it. Of course, the last time we saw you, you back in January, you put on a nice little streak here. But my understanding is you, you did have to recover a little bit from an injury. So what was the toughest part of just recovering from the injury of just knowing you, you couldn't push yourself you know, and get into the gym and put the work in? Was that just the hardest thing about it? absolutely you know uh, i thought i'd be fine i was like oh three months that doesn't seem that long it was like one week went by and i was going crazy you know so uh it, it was definitely hard mentally and i had my girlfriend keep telling me to chill out because i, I tried going into the gym and doing like one arm rows on the bike and i had to do something and uh when i start getting like frustrated you know it's a the gym is a place i get to go let out some frustration and things and that only known how to work out since my whole life so it, it was definitely very very hard man it was my first major surgery so um you know i got through it and uh i'm good now but uh, yeah, it, it was hard it, it, that time away from the gym did it allow you all to, to maybe sit back and, and look at not just your game but the rest of the mma game and maybe uh in a way just work on your brain to, to get pre- prepared for whenever that fight when next fight would take place um, yeah, you know, I actually, uh, picked up a book that I have, I don't do often, but, uh, my coach Jiva told me to read this book called Relentless okay. from, uh, Tim Grover, Michael Jordan's coach. Uh, and it's it definitely like a mind strengthening pro coach. And that's what I definitely want to do is strengthen my brain. Um, you know, if I can't strengthen my body, I got to strengthen something. So, uh, I went and did that and I got a little bit into reading, which was cool. And, uh, it was very different, but very exciting at the same time. Now, is there certain types of book that you like to pick up, or is it kind of just it's, it's all different? Um, well, I was reading a lot of self-help books. Okay. Um, those were really cool, but uh, I definitely want to start getting into like some stories. You know what I mean? Some stories. Uh, I, I watch TV a lot, and I kind of want to fall off that a little bit, so I'm, I'm definitely going to try to bring a book for my flight tomorrow. It's a long flight, so maybe I can get into a nice book on that. Is the worst part about this this fight is just the the long plane ride you got ahead of you? Um, you know that, and you know fighting in front of thirty thousand Russians and uh, getting booed. But uh, I, I've been through it before in Brazil twice, so there's nothing new to me. I think one of the the cliches we always hear, you know, when you have a, a fighter going to enemy territory, you can't leave it in the hands of judges. You, you, you never know if you can win. Is that pretty much the mentality of like, look, I know I got to go in there and finish this guy because I can't expect that I'm gonna get three, you know, judges from Russia to to give me the fight. Is that any part of the mentality? Absolutely. Uh, they have five judges actually. Um, well, you know, well, the, when I, I watched this weekend's card uh, in England, and they had five judges, so I'm assuming they have it like all around. But um, yeah, it definitely, I want to finish. I, I hear a lot like in Russia, a lot of controversial decisions, um, especially in Russia, like not let alone like any other country. So um, I don't want to leave it to the judges. I want to go out there and finish this guy, or give him my all. You know what I mean, and uh, leave it all in the cage. But uh, you get a you get a nice little bonus if you finish too. So uh, I definitely want to get out there and finish this guy. I, you know that was something that people have talked about it is a finishing bonus and how that could uh, entice fighters. For you, is is that part of the reason why you wanted to fight an ACB? Is understanding that hey, if I go out there and finish a fight, I'm gonna get some more money. Um. Yeah. Um. 
Well, for sure, uh, I know ACB, they, they pay well, and that, that's the next best thing uh, outside of UFC, I feel like, right now. So, I mean, or if you're one of the main guys in Bellator, but uh, I, I definitely want to look back and uh, get back to UFC hopefully one day. And right now, I'm going to just enjoy my, my new journey with ACB and hopefully uh, make my make, make a name there. And, uh, yeah, the money's well, so I'm just going to go out there and uh, hopefully make a statement. Yeah, I think a lot of fans maybe don't understand the kind of money ACB is paying, but I do know managers are definitely aware of how much yeah. money that, that's getting offered. And I, I, I've I've said this before. I think that ACB is actually having a big impact on United States MMA because a lot of fighters are, are now getting those opportunities over there, which is great. I mean, it, it's great yeah. to see y'all get the, get those opportunities. But uh, did hear that you you did a little training at Kings MMA with, with Tony Ferguson, obviously. I'm like- Black House. Black House, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, you know, what What can you take from being around him? And, I mean, obviously he's got a, a, a different type of style. What was the biggest takeaway from that, those training sessions? Um, just, you know, like I felt like I, I held my own for sure. Going, going up against a guy who's basically one of the best in the world, number two in the world yeah, at that. And um, seeing how I do with them, I can definitely take that away. Like, okay, you know what, like, I can definitely hang with these guys, uh, some of the best in the world, you know. And, and Black House is a lot of guys up there, you know what I mean? We got, you know, Alan Jovan, who's there, you know, Kevin Casey. And I get to train the bigger guys, too, and it's tough. But, uh, um, I mean, there, there's a lot of high-profile high, high profile people at Black House that come in. Cobrino was just there. He just won ADCC. And, um, yeah, and Tony Ferguson was coming to Bubba Jenkins, NCAA national champion. Uh, the fact that I get all these guys around me, I get to test myself at its true level and, um, I, I find that I do, you know, pretty well, and uh, it, it makes it gives me a lot more confidence uh, going into this fight. You mentioned about training with some bigger guys. Is that something you like to do, or is it one of the things you like to try to mix it up? You know, maybe get some guys that are in a weight class lower than you, higher you, and the same with you. Is it is it a mix of the three? I, I, I like to mix it all because you little guys, you got you got to you got to catch up with their speed. You go with the bigger guys, now you get tested with your strength. And then you get to go with guys your own size and really see how you do with that. So it's like you get you. There, there's a benefit in every weight class you train with. I think you know. What I mean, obviously with little guys, I'm not gonna try to you know punch them as hard as I can. I'm gonna go a little lighter, but uh, I want to try to match their speed. If anything, if I go with the bigger guys, you know, I got to be on top of my game, not get hit by them. And uh, grappling with them is very good, especially if um, if I want to like fight a grappler. I like going with big guys to really like. Get that strength, you know, that uh, muscle fatigue out. So if I go with a guy my own size, uh, it won't be as bad. You're taking on an unbeaten opponent here in, in Shamil. Uh, as you have obviously prepared for this, you know, very short notice, what, what really sticks out to you when, when you watch him fight? Is there, is there one particular aspect that you're like, man, I got to watch out for this? Um, There isn't actually anything particular. I know he's well-rounded. He's very light on his feet. Um, he likes to uh, come in and out a lot. So I got to... Make sure my timing is very, very on point because he's very in and out, light on his feet. He's very athletic. He's explosive. He likes to go for takes down, takedowns himself once in a while. So, And he likes to catch kicks and uh, use that as a takedown. So I definitely got to watch when I throw my kicks. I got to make sure my timing is on point. And um, I feel like it's going to be a war. You know, he, He's a good fighter. He's very, um, very good. He has six decisions. So... I'm uh, questioning his power, but uh, I've seen some highlights, and he, he he's got a couple of knockdowns. So, um, you know, I'm not I'm not taking him lightly at all. I want to go out there and uh, use my experience as you know my favor, and uh, hopefully come out on top. You know, is it just ultimately one of those things of like, look, I, I respect his abilities. I know he's a tough dude, but you know, this is about what I want to do because you want to be the guy, you know, dictating how this fight goes, as opposed to kind of basically waiting for him. Correct? Yes. Yeah, I want I want to choose where this fight goes. So um, if I want to, if I feel like I'm getting the better of the standing, you know, I might want to, you know, try to knock him out. But I feel like I'm having a hard time finding my timing. Um, hopefully, I can uh, pick to go to the ground. You know, I know he, that's probably where he's a little bit weaker is the ground, and uh, off of his back. You know, there was a fight where it got overturned that he lost. Uh, I actually had him winning that fight as well, but I saw his uh, the the Brazilian guy control him a little bit on the ground. So you know, I might look to take it there. I might try to keep it standing. It's going to kind of be one of those kind of feel it out how, how, how where I want to take it kind of things. 
you mentioned about you've gone to Brazil before, now going to Russia. Will you take some of the lessons from your Brazil trip in terms of the weight cut, in terms of uh, for this one as well? Yeah, um, I definitely wanted to lose a little bit more than normal before I get out there, just so um, I'm not, you know, caught off guard with any bad circumstances. You know, hopefully I have like a gym out there or, or, or somewhere I can cut weight. But uh, I got my coach, Kenny Johnson, knows a lot of people up in Moscow. So he said if I need anything, gym to train at, uh, let him know and uh, I'll get hooked up. So, um, but, it, you know, going to Brazil definitely is going to make me. Uh, feel more comfortable going to russia because i've gone through it already it's not it's not my first time rodeo so yeah i I feel good about it you mentioned you know look the goal is to get back to the ufc how close do you think you are to that goal or is it you don't allow yourself to think about that you're just like look i i gotta take one fight at a time and we'll see what happens i mean like i thought i i deserved to be back like two fights ago or even my last fight especially, you know, because the guy's only loss, him, like that last guy I beat was to Rick Glenn, who's in the UFC. And, you know, on Shark Tank, I'm ranked higher than current guys in the UFC, you know. So um, I definitely think I belong, but if they're not, if they're not biting, I'm just going to go do my thing, you know, and uh, hopefully just climb up the ranks still. And uh, when they want me, they're going to want me. Is it one of those things that, you know, I think some fighters kind of, it gets them down sometimes. They're like, man, why am I not getting that call? Is it one of those things of, as you evolve the fire, like, look, there's certain things I can control and there's certain things I can't control. And, and I can only worry about the things that I do control. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think it's just a lot harder to get in after you have already been in. Um, so, yeah, exactly. I can't, I can't control the outcome. I can control how I take it and how I, you know, proceed from there. So I'm just going to, you know, just yeah, basically just keep going. And when my time comes, my time comes. I, there's nothing I can do about it, you know. So I have to do me still. I have to still pay bills and uh, fight. And, of course, everyone's going to be able to watch your fight come up on Saturday night. We'll be available or Saturday afternoon here in the United States on, on Fight TV, so fans can check that out. Christos, as always, I appreciate time. And let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media. Um, you guys can follow me on Facebook. I'm on Facebook, Christos Yagos. And uh, I'm on Instagram more than Twitter. I just Whatever I post on Instagram goes on Twitter. So uh, you can follow me on both of them at C, as in you know my first initial, and then my last name, G-I-A-G-O-S. Again, C-G-I-A-G-O-S. Now, are you, the, are you the type of guy that's a lot of food pictures you put up there? I mean, that, that seems to be the popular thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I like to post what I eat, especially if it's a good meal and it looks nice. I, and you gotta take a picture, or then it, you know, if you don't take a picture, then no one's ever gonna know what you had. So you know, if you don't take a picture, it didn't happen, basically. <laughs> see, when I see the food pictures, if I'm really hungry, that's when I just get jealous. <laughs> but I'm guilty of it too. When I, I travel on the road, I, I uh, tweet out pictures of the food I eat because it's that's one of the great things about we get to travel, we get to try all the different food around the around the country. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to try some Russian food. I'm actually taking my friend up there with me. He's going to corner me in the fight. He's uh, was born in Russia and speaks Russian very well, so uh, that's going to be uh, a big plus on my part. And uh, he's going to tell me exactly what the food, what, what's good, what should I should eat, things like that. So he's very intelligent in that aspect. That definitely makes the trip a lot easier when you got someone who can interpret everything for you, too. Yes, yes. But, of course, everyone watch it on Saturday on Fight. Chris Oso, as always, man, I appreciate time and good luck in the fight. No worries. Thank you so much for having me.